What is this, you ask? Could it be, you say? Yes, it is. I'm Lance from the Yggdrasil Game Station, and this is Banjo-Kazooie. Rare Rush Classic, Platformer, Collectathon game. It was amazing in its time, and it will be amazing now. And we're gonna play it. All the way through. So, to get started, I'm just gonna let the first cutscene roll. It's really long and unfortunately unskippable, so you guys can have fun with this. I may throw in a few comments here and there, but mostly just get yourself lost in the game. Have fun. I relate so well to this bear. Sleeping in. That poster in the background, by the way, with banjo in a forest and mushrooms, caused tons of online controversy. People thought it was a hidden level. It's actually probably a beta level, but it's not in the game files anywhere, and that's the only picture there's ever been of it. But yeah, interesting Bedrick Kazooie facts. Also, can we talk about how this bear actually entertains the idea that her brother is in the sky? Read the text. She really does entertain that. She's like, I don't know, maybe. Maybe my brother is flying in the sky. This bear sleeps just like I do. I relate so hardcore. We're only four minutes in, and finally the game starts. Woohoo! So, this is actually an entire area, it's just a tutorial. It's called Spiral Mountain, but I'm gonna skip the tutorial and just show you how to get all the collectibles, because there's not a lot here. Also, how do you know... Like, the bottles, right? The mall? He knows her si his sister, he knows Tootie. How does he not know Banjo? It's just, you know kind of weird that they live next to each other, and they don't know each other. It's also weird that they live next to the giant Gruntota-shaped fortress, and they don't know who she is. Alright, we're gonna skip the tutorial, and I'm gonna collect all the pieces. There's not that many, and they're pretty easy to get. 
I don't know what the optimal path is, I think there might be a faster one, but this is just what I do. It's just my thing, okay? I promise I'll never do that again. It's energy, not life, but yeah, basically they're extra health. They're extra hearts from Zelda. Heart pieces. Heart pieces is what I was looking for there. And extra life, too. I think I, yeah, I did miss one of the heart, one of the, uh, honeycombs, though. It's over here. Around top of that tree. And then there's one down here in the water. Because like all N64, this game has terrible water controls. Literally, there's not a single water game. Or game with water levels that didn't have terrible swimming controls. It's actually not so bad, but it's just awkward. And, you know, water levels. There are some Zelda fans that are having, like, triggered panic attacks right now because that's at the first water level. They probably have a hotline for that. Bing. And you get the last one from killing this cauliflower. No one said it had to make sense, it was the 1990s. I almost said it was the 1998s. You know, the multiple years that were 1998. And this is the Pointless Spiral Mountain. Yep. While we're climbing, you could like or favorite, subscribe, leave a comment, write me a note, you know, whatever you want to do. Just saying. I'd be remiss if I left this level before saying, the music is great. In this level and in all the levels, this game has beautiful music. Another unskippable cutscene. That bear could fit between those bars. I'm just saying, she's, you know, really tiny. Also, I love that the witch built a machine that she can't fit into, specifically for sucking the beauty out of another person. And she has a room for it, too. I mean, I can understand the tower being magic, but still, just kind of weird. Oh, she just had a little cry, too. So now we're in the lair. And we get our first Jiggy. These are basically stars. Think Mario 64. Yeah, basically, actually. These are stars and the notes in all the levels are coins. And that's the game. See, as this game being much more creative, this game has some really weird, interesting stuff in it. Anyway, all of the levels are blocked up like that, or in some other fashion, they're blocked up until you find the corresponding pedestal and painting. Then you need a certain number of jiggies to put into the painting to turn it into a gateway to the level. Bing. And now the level's open. I agree with the witch here. Anyway, I think that I'm not going to go into the level yet because I can do Mumbo's Mountain in one go-through, so I'm going to do that. Instead, 
for the rest of the video, we're gonna watch the cutscene that plays every time you hit. So you have this menu, right? And any time you want to save and leave, it does this. And this is hilarious and creepy. Just watch. It acts like you lost. But then this happens, and it's amazing. Somebody animated this, and I love it. This is a kid's game, and somebody did that. Her voice is like, breathy moans, too. It's terrible and wonderful at the same time. Also, she says rar. Do you just like listen to her? She's just saying rar. And then it guilt trips you, but it basically like wants a Stockholm syndrome. It's like, oh, uh, you left, you lose. So that's it for Let's Play Banjo Kazooie, and the next episode we'll tackle Mumbo's Mountain. Have a great night, everyone!